It feels like an age since the R35 GTR was launched. Its rep for being an affordable supercar killer was justified. Its presence was something else. And it has so many fans on the internet that if you say, showed it getting monstered by an Audi estate, you'd get more hate than that lady who put a cat in a bin. Because it was so accessible, people started fiddling with them, giving them a bit more power here, some tweaked aero there, some visual changes. But where some did a little, others, like Litchfield, did a lot. Which leads us to today. This, the Litchfield Track Edition. Starting with the already pretty Ace GTR Track Edition, Litchfield has used its substantial knowledge of tuning GTRs to make pretty much everything about it a little bit more, giving the Track Edition Godzilla a slightly spikier taste. Nissan's very own GTR Track Edition already sounds pretty meaty. You get that 562 brake horsepower turbocharged V6, you get hollow anti-roll bars, adjustable dampers, forged wheels, special Track Edition bits. You get quite a lot. Now, for the likes of you and me, that sounds like a pretty considerable package. But for Litchfield, that's a starting point. So what's new? Well, there are larger air intakes to the turbos and motors so they can breathe a little easier, a modified fuel system to feed more in, a modified intake manifold, Bilstein Damptronic dampers that are comfier in comfort and harder in race, stiffer eyeback springs, and a tweaked engine and gearbox giving 631 brake horsepower and 600 pound-foot. 0 to 62, less than 3 seconds. 0 to 100, less than 6. And it'll top out at 205 miles an hour or so Litchfield says. On top of that, there's a few visual tweaks, most notably the big chin spoiler on the front. But the nerdery doesn't stop there. There's Litchfield's handling pack on top of all of that. Now what that does is it adjusts the car's wheelbase, and I did check this, it actually does, ever so slightly, as well as adjusting the car's front suspension geometry and caster angle. The idea here is to give the car's tires more contact with the tarmac giving you more grip and also better steering feel. And if all of that wasn't quite enough for you, you can adjust the car's like rev limit for the, the launch control on the wheel or on an app. Litchfield has fiddled with the traction control as well, giving it greater control to catch any unintended skids and correct them before Nissan's own system. It's also dug into the ECU to give the driver adjustable boost and map settings to get the best out of local fuel. All of that sounds very clever, and it also sounds very expensive. Uh, and it is very expensive, actually, just shy of £100,000 worth of expensive. Now, you would expect, because this is a modified car, that you also have to take on board loads of risk and you don't get a warranty. Well, actually, Litchfield has years of experience in tuning GTRs, which lowers the risk quotient to touch, and you do get a warranty. Essentially, you can have the cake and eat it too, with more horsepower and faster. It sounds like the kind of car Nissan should have been making all along, but just won't. The GTR is perfect for some people and reviled by others. Those who love it, love it. There can be no other car, only GTR. The culture around it is passionate all the time. Those who don't get it, a bit like me, struggle to understand. Often it's called the PlayStation car. It's dismissed as easy speed for people that can't hack a proper, in inverted commas, car. And that is that. Both of those arguments seem a little extreme for me. Personally, I find the standard GTR quite underwhelming. It's fast with a capital foot, but that's kind of all it is. It does the fast thing, and that's all. It's quite boring, really. So I'm hoping that this Litchfield Track Edition has unlocked a little bit of extra fun. It's power delivery. It's punchy. It's less on the smooth side and more on the punchy side. The delivery is, it's addictive. You want the noise. You want that whoosh. You want to be pressed back in your seat, fired off into the distance. And then the brakes, nail it, and then your face, goes, your face falls off or tries to fall off. I like that. Now, I don't know what Litchfield has done, but the fine control on the throttle is staggering. You just give it a tiny little bit and there's an extra few miles an hour. Lift a tiny little bit off, the nose will tuck itself in. It's really lovely. The gearbox 
can be had in a number of modes. I've got it in its most aggressive and it is one of those insta changes. Now I know Litchfield has fiddled with it to make it more responsive and more angrier and more gtr -er, and uh, it seems to have worked because it's bang, done. Let's break, let's go down one, let's go down one. My face is falling off again. Dampers are all adjustable. Now, you can have them in full-on track mode if you want to. They make it quite stiff. They do make the car feel very bumpy and bouncy. You can see me now bouncing around a little bit. It will get you the faster lap time, probably, but it won't be comfy even on a super smooth surface. So if you want to talk to someone, you can make them more comfortable. More so, they say, than Nissan's standard setup. In the standard car, I found the steering it's just a little bit too easy, a little bit dull. In fact, I found the whole package a little bit dull. In here, with the addition of the handling pack, Litchfield says that the steering feedback is better. And I agree, it is a little bit better. You can feel more of what the front end is doing. You do get the impression of what's going on. You can't feel everything. That is the nature of the GTR. It's just, it's not as fine as you'd like it to be. Also, the weighting of the steering, I find really bizarre. It's not light and it's not heavy, but it's still not quite right. It's not my Goldilocks. I may not like the steering, but the grip is, it's peeling my face away. It is so easy to drive this car at 110, 120 miles an hour. You can just go fast everywhere. It's a GTR, but it's a GTR with a little bit more feel to it. It's no longer an underwhelming car. It's sharper. It's a little bit more exciting to drive. And the fact that you can corner at all of the speed. You can just keep going faster until I imagine your cheek is all the way over there. But then you can put the car into comfort mode and as your cheek slowly finds its elastic limit again, you can have a nice comfortable conversation with your significant other. Put the gearbox into automatic and it'll sort itself out quite nicely. A bit of Jekyll and a little bit of Hyde. And yes, while that is a cliche, it does rather fit here nicely. Litchfield has been messing with GTRs since the very early days. They know what's what when it comes to getting the best out of them. But are the modifications enough to make the GTR an interesting car again? Or has Litchfield simply made a slightly boring car faster? The GTR has traditionally been about going fast, anywhere, anytime. If something happens and you need a fast doing to it, that is what the GTR will do. But, as I said earlier, it always left me feeling a touch underwhelmed, a little bit unexcited. Yeah, the straight line acceleration will make you smile and the cornering speeds will be hilarious. But it just it wasn't all that. However, this Litchfield Track Edition, it rubs out some of that boring. It takes the under off of the whelming. It is whelming me right now, and it makes something that's already very, very competent enjoyable as well. I am no longer underwhelmed by the GTR. Consider me whelmed. <laughs>